Who's the you talking to? Make a threat! 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 You got them tails already? Welcome back to the Lackluster Channel. Eight days after the George Floyd incident, Chicago was consumed by waves of riots that destroyed portions of the city. Just eight days later, on June 2nd of 2020, employees of a family dollar store in Grand Crossing were cleaning the interior of the business after it had been ravaged by looters. One of the employees, Miss Julie Campos, had just started as a cashier. In fact, it was her first job. At just 19 years old, her only other work experience was as a volunteer for the Night Ministry, an organization that provided housing and other resources to those struggling with homelessness. That June morning, she was making trips to carry collapsed boxes and other garbage to a dumpster in the parking lot with her co-workers. For unknown reasons, multiple Chicago police officers arrived at the Family Dollar at around 11.40 a.m. The store's assistant manager was upset at the officer's presence and let the cops know it, and Officer Taylor responded by berating the man. You know what? Get your red shirt wearing ass in there. You think you talking to? My man, my man, if I was gonna arrest you, you'd be in cuffs. Well, stop talking to me. Don't say to me. You know what? Your mama hoe, you bitch ass. Your mama sucked my dick last night. Your mama sucked my dick. Make a threat. Make a threat. Make a threat. Officer Taylor affirmatively and needlessly escalated the situation by using vulgar epithets and challenging the manager. Make a threat. I'm gonna show you who stop. Make a threat. I'm gonna show the commotion caused other employees to exit the store to see what was happening. Miss Campos began recording on her cell phone as Officer Taylor and the manager argued. Officer Howard can be seen pulling Officer Taylor away, but he returns to continue arguing. The other officers on scene repeatedly attempt to remove Officer Taylor, but he continues to provoke the man to threaten a police officer. Take your uniform, don't be a fan. Hey, my uniform, man. what the f I'm gonna be over here for? Why the f would I be here if I had a uniform off? I'm over here because I'm working, dumb mother Beat your you be my Officer Taylor is again removed by his fellow officers, and he calls for two additional units and tells his colleagues he wants the man arrested for threatening him. Yeah, can I get uh, at least two units to this location, squad, this family dollar? But I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to enforce an arrest, and I need uh, some assistance. Don't say nothing. 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 Don't as the scene calms down, Miss Campos resumed her work, throwing collapsed boxes into the dumpster. A few minutes goes by without incident until additional units arrive, and Officer Taylor then decides to go in after the manager to arrest him. Officer Howard grabs Officer Taylor to stop him, but he shakes her off. You got something your call that's fine? As he angrily approaches the door, Miss Campos appears carrying boxes and takes a step back, unsure of what's happening and what to do with Officer Taylor storming towards her. Less than a second after telling her to step back, he strikes her in the face and pushes her to the side. Miss Campos immediately goes live on Facebook as Officer Taylor chases the store manager through the aisles. More units over this family dollar. What are you doing? What happened? Okay, you all step back. He's getting locked up. Unable to locate the manager, the deranged officer now focuses his attention to Miss Campos. You know what? First of all, first of all, you don't stand in front of the police telling them they can't come in when they're affecting the arrest. She, she can go. She can go for it. Hey D, hey J D, he had in there somewhere. He had in there somewhere. Let's go. Let's go. Get out of here.
Officer Taylor now arrests Ms. Campos for obstruction, claiming that she jumped in front of him to block his path. Despite the multiple other officers on scene, not one of them stepped in to stop Officer Taylor. The store manager they were originally pursuing got away, and of lesser concern, while transporting Ms. Campos, Officer Taylor failed to secure his seatbelt. Ms. Campos was taken to the District 6 station and lockup, where she was held for nearly five hours, during which the officers facilitated, condoned and turned a blind eye to her unconstitutional detention. At no point was she read her Miranda warnings and was kept shackled for almost the entire duration. Though she, a 19-year-old woman, posed no threat or risk of harm, had never been arrested, and was currently under arrest for a non-violent misdemeanor offense. She was never offered food, water, a chance to use the bathroom, or an opportunity to inform her family of her whereabouts, despite her pleas to allow her to make arrangements for her one-year-old son to be picked up from daycare. Even though they never provided Ms. Campos with Miranda warnings, the officers interrogated Ms. Campos while she was in custody. She was eventually charged with obstruction and released, but months later, the charge was voluntarily dismissed by the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, as the arrest lacked probable cause. A person violates Section 31-1, Subsection A, if she knowingly resists or obstructs the performance of any authorized act by a police officer. But Ms. Campos didn't resist, obstruct, or interfere, and no reasonable officer would have believed that Ms. Campos was knowingly resisting or obstructing Officer Taylor's duties when he encountered and assaulted her, as she had no idea that Officer Taylor had arbitrarily decided to arrest the assistant manager. But that didn't stop the officers from falsifying their statements to conceal her false arrest. The original case incident report states that Ms. Campos blocked the entrance and refused to move when the officer gave her verbal directions. In May of 2022, the ACLU filed a lawsuit against the city of Chicago, Officer Taylor, and Officer Howard for false arrest and detention and unlawful detention in violation of the Fourth Amendment, failure to intervene, and indemnification against the city, claiming that despite a known or obvious risk of constitutional violations, the city's lack of policies and training failed to prevent officer retaliation against individuals recording the police and to prevent false arrests. Officer Taylor has received 28 civilian complaints of misconduct, which is more than 93% of other officers according to the lawsuit. However, there is no word of any disciplinary action against him for this incident yet. I will continue to follow this case as it moves forward, but remember that lawsuits can take years, so it may be a while before you hear anything else of it. Let me know what you think down below, as it seems obvious that Officer Taylor is unfit for duty. I have edited the original video, but will link it in its entirety without comment in the description and pinned comment. As always, thanks for watching. If you have a video you'd like to submit for review, use the link in the description or pinned comment. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification for future content. And remember to like, share, and comment down below of what you think of this interaction. It really helps the channel. If you enjoy our content, try our other channels, Lackluster Limited for criminal psychology content and The Odd Side for paranormal videos. Shirts and other merchandise are available at the Teespring store. Memberships start at just a buck if you'd like to help further support the channel and get a slick lack logo next to your name. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All links are down below.